integrating IP cameras with intrusion. And this is, you know, integrating this to provide benefits for security, but it's also to provide benefits for your business as well and for your customers' businesses. And we're going to talk a lot about those kinds of things. This is new to a lot of folks, so we're going to start by showing you how this is done. So we're going to learn how IP cameras can integrate with intrusion systems. We're going to talk a little bit about video analytics and how they can improve security and also help someone run their business more efficiently. We're going to talk about some real-world applications, because real-world applications always are a great way to get your mind working on, you know, how, what does this mean to me? How can I help my customers with this? We're going to spend a lot of time on that. First, though, I'd like to start out with a poll and just to ask some questions here. Number one, the question is, how can you integrate a camera with a Bosch intrusion system to provide higher security? So we've got 42 responses so far. Well, most of the answers are coming in with uh, number three or four, which are directly through the network without special software, directly through the network and through video management. And the good news is you're all right. This can be accomplished both directly through a network and through special software. The most unique way, though, is directly through that network. As you are probably aware, Bosch makes a long line of IP cameras, from very small, simple cameras all the way up to our, our MIC cameras that are used for oil rigs and such. And all those IP cameras can be integrated with Bosch intrusion panels. And the neat thing here is that it's a direct machine-to-machine -machine connection over that network. There's no additional hardware or software required. It's a two-way integration, meaning that not only can the camera talk to the panel, but the panel can talk to the camera. And we get some unique benefits in doing those types of things. You can see here on the side that depending on the alarm panel, it will support a different number of cameras. And it goes all the way up to 16 cameras supported in our 9512G panel. Each camera that is connected can support up to eight VCA or video content analysis events. So each camera can do eight things or actually take up eight inputs on the alarm panel. Why would you do such a thing? We'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. We also have the ability to integrate our cameras through our BVMS software, which is the Bosch Video Management System. We're not going to talk about that too much today, but so you know, that can be accomplished either through our server-based software or through some of our DVARs, our DVAR IP All-in-One 5000 and our DVAR IP 7000. And what this provides us is command and control. We can actually arm and disarm the alarm panel and activate doors and such right from the video management display. It gives us a head-end display so we can see what's going on. We get events and we can see which areas are armed in the alarm panel. Event interaction, that means that if something happens, we can bring up video associated with that event. Someone disarmed, show me the camera by that door. Someone swiped their card and had an access granted, show me the camera in that case. And with the server-based software, we can actually support up to 20 panels per server at the same time. Most of our conversation today was going to be about the IP direct connection, though. And when we talk about that, it's important to kind of start with what can you do with that camera? What type of events can you detect? You know, when we think about a camera, of course, we think about video and video for forensics and video for response to events. That's happening all the time, and video is going to be recorded. And the first thing we think about when we think of a camera, of course, is the video. But cameras can also be used as sensors. Our cameras have very intelligent video analytics, and they can detect things that a human may or may not be able to detect. Here's a list of some of the analytics that are built into all of our cameras. For example, there's an object inside a field. Somebody's walked into some place they're not supposed to be. Someone has entered that field. Somebody has left that field. So some, something was supposed to be here, and it left. 
they've crossed the line. There's loitering, idle objects, something has been left behind. Crowd detection, and unfortunately these days, crowd detection is really important. We didn't think about this two or three months ago, but now we have customers that are using our cameras to make sure that there aren't crowds in a store, that people aren't too close to one another. So it's interesting how that has transpired. Things like occupancy, how many people are here? Has somebody fallen down, a condition change? Is somebody tampering with the camera? And what's cool about this, these 16 analytics, eight of them can be set in parallel, which means it can do more than one thing at a time. When we talk about some of the applications, we're going to cover why that's important. So here's all the things we can detect with our cameras. Now we have some filters or some classification that we can put on those events. So for example, we can check the size, we can check the speed, we can check the color in order to make a, a decision. Size is probably the easiest, right? If a truck backs up to your loading dock, that's different than if a person walks up to your loading dock. And the camera can tell the difference between a person and a truck. So it can tell you that difference, and you can respond differently. We also have some high-end scripting that you can add. So if the analytics don't do quite what you want, you can actually write some scripts that provide even more detailed analysis of those events. So the camera has detected an event. It's classified it. It said, hey, there's a truck backing up to your dock, or there's a person where they're not supposed to be. Now what do you do? Well, one thing you can do is send that information to the intrusion panel. And that, again, can happen over the network with one of our network-capable alarm panels. This graphic kind of shows how all that works. So we have a camera. The camera has detected an event. And over the network, it's going to send it to the alarm panel. Think about in security what an alarm panel's job is. The alarm panel's job is to take information from different detectors. Maybe it's a door contact or a motion detector or a smoke detector or a panic button, or in this case, it's a camera. So it takes this information, and it's got to make a decision. OK, what do I do? Think about an alarm system. If somebody walks through your front lobby in the middle of the day, when your store is open, nobody cares. Well, you might care because they're a customer, but you're not going to call the police. Somebody walks through your front lobby at 3 o'clock in the morning when the store is closed, that's a problem and you want an alarm. Something has to decide when that's a problem. That's the alarm panel. Is it armed or is it not? Do I send a report? Do I not? So the alarm panel is processing this information. It's getting data from sensors like a camera. And now it can decide, OK, I can do something. What can I do? Well, maybe I'm just going to make some noise at a keypad. So in this example, somebody's standing outside the, the door at the back of a school. When school's in session, students are running around. Nobody's supposed to be outside that door. Let's make some noise at the keypad at the principal's office so that somebody can go and respond to that. We have make an announcement. So we can actually activate an input on one of our PA systems that can play a pre-recorded message like, hey, you're getting a little close to the fence. Why don't you get out of here? We can send a text. So let's say we're back at the school and somebody's parked the car in the bus loop and the buses are coming, and we're going to have a traffic jam. Send a text to the security guard, and they can come out and ask them to move the car. Or something really bad has happened. Some bad guy is here, and we need the police. Send a report to the central station. So based upon the severity of the event that we have detected, we can decide how we're going to respond and how we're going to communicate that event. By tying the capability of the camera and its high-end analytics into the capability of the control panel to com communicate and report in multiple different ways, we really have a, a added value and a synergistic event, a effect of having these two things together. So it really, it, 
depending on your application, depending on the verticals that you're working in, whether they're retail or office or banking or education or government or military, this can really provide a lot of value. So think about today enforcing health and safety regulations. Too many people are in the same place at the same time. A queuing alarm. Again, we have customers now that are using our cameras that they already had in place in their retail stores to make sure that there aren't long lines by the cashiers. That used to be about business. Now it's about something else that nobody wants to talk about because we've heard too much about it. But it's a feature that we had there that nobody, we didn't think about using it in this way just a couple weeks ago. The fact that the camera can detect these things and the panel can report them so that someone can respond to these things, that's the story here. That's how it all comes together. So let's talk about some applications. And this is a real world application. So you see we have an emergency door. It's an emergency exit, right? And what's in front of the emergency exit? A stack of boxes on a pallet. Why is that a problem? Well, it's a problem because that emergency exit is no longer an exit because you can't get out it. So with those boxes in front of that emergency exit, I actually have a safety issue. I, if there is a bad event and somebody needs to leave through that exit, they can't do it right now because the exit is blocked. Fire marshals hate that. If the fire marshal is doing an inspection of your facility and an emergency exit is blocked, they're going to write you a fine. They might close your store or your business if you do it enough. So you'd like to avoid this. Well, our cameras actually have that object left behind or object in field feature. And what it does is it actually can detect that it can no longer see the floor in front of that store because something has been put there and activate an alert. When it activates that alert, it trips the alarm panel the alarm panel then does whatever you want. Make some noise at the keypad, send a text. Have somebody come and move that pallet of boxes so A, the fire marshal doesn't yell at me, but most importantly, if there's actually an event and somebody needs to use that emergency exit, they can use it. And so that adds security and business continuity at the same time. Here's an example, and actually, I might change my mind as we get into the presentation, but this is my favorite example. We have a fence, and we have a camera looking down the fence line. Why do you have a fence? You have a fence to keep the bad guys out, right? You want to keep those people out of, you know, your facility or your, your parking lot or, or whatever. Well, we can have a camera that's watching along that fence line, and what it actually can do is detect when someone has approached the fence. So this is an application I call approach and breach. So there's somebody off in those woods and the camera has actually detected a person in this area near the fence and they're approaching the fence. We'd like that person to go away. So the camera can actually detect that and activate an alarm on the alarm panel. We don't need to call the police yet. We just want the person to go away. So maybe we turn on the floodlights. Maybe we play a message that says, you are entering a secured area. Please leave immediately. That's great, right? Maybe they're smart. They realize they've been caught, and they run, and they go away. But maybe they don't. Maybe they hang out a little while longer. We can have a second analytic that can detect now they are loitering. Not only have they entered this field, but they've been here a little while. We can activate a second input on the alarm panel that plays a different message, maybe a little more aggressive. Please leave immediately or the police will be called. And then maybe they're smart enough to leave, but maybe they're not. Maybe they're just determined to jump over that fence. So they jump over the fence and they activate that trip line that you see on the left. They activate that trip line. Now we have a full alarm. Now, now it's real. Release the hounds, call the police get these people caught and out of here. So that's three analytics from the same camera for the same event with 
a different acceleration in the way that we react based upon the actions of the intruder. And that can all happen with one camera, one alarm panel. So here we have a car that is parked in the back alley of this business here. This looks a lot like the drive through of my favorite Starbucks. It's not, but it looks like it. One of the favorite ways to rob a business is to go with a couple people, and I'm going to have you park the car by this emergency door, which happens to be by some really good electronics, and I'm going to steal some of those really good electronics, boogie out that door and get in the car, and we're going to drive away. The camera can actually detect that a car has been parked in this area where it's not supposed to be, and if it's there for longer than 30 seconds or so, you can decide how long that is. It can activate an alert and signal security. And now security can come react, maybe catch the bad guy, maybe catch the shoplifter, maybe scare away the, the guy in the getaway car so the shoplifter gets out the door and there's nobody there. That's an awkward situation for him. Anyhow, we thwarted the event because of the ability to catch that that car is parked someplace it isn't supposed to be for longer than it should. Another thing we can do with cars, it isn't quite as nefarious as somebody, you know, shoplifting or stealing a bunch of stuff from your store, is think about that bus loop. If you've ever dropped your kids off in front of their school, not realizing that it's bus time, or you're picking up your kid, not realizing that it's bus time, and you're parked in the bus loop, and the school buses come, and they surround your car, you're not going to be very happy. You're probably going to be scared. You're probably thinking, I can't get out of here because all these school buses. The school buses don't like you there either. So what they can do is actually have that camera watching the bus loop. They detect that a car has been parked there. The buses are coming, so it signals the security guard, or it plays a message maybe over a PA system, please move out of the bus lane because the buses are coming. Museums. We can protect museums in different ways with our cameras and our analytics. So imagine you're a camera and you see this view of all these paintings on the wall, right? There's a couple things that can happen in a museum. One of them is somebody inadvertently or touches one of the artifacts or one of the paintings, maybe gets a little oil line or makes it yucky. They don't want, they want people to touch them. But they don't want to put stuff in front of them because they don't, they don't want people to enjoy the, the things that are in this museum, right? So what we can do is actually use our museum mode in our cameras that detects if someone has moved too close to a painting or a piece of art that's in the middle of the floor, anything you can think of in that regard. And what happens is when it detects that, it activates an alarm, and again, it sets this chain of events it activates the control panel. The control panel plays a message over the PA that says you're too close to the artifact, please move away. Now, that same camera looking at this area, and uh-oh, that, that picture's gone. Someone has stolen a picture. Object removed. That's a whole different thing, right? Getting a little close is one thing, but something removed, someone has stolen a picture. So what do we do? We activate a different point on the panel, but this time we're not playing a message that says, please move away from the picture. We're locking all the doors in the museum so they can't run out with the picture. We're calling the police. We're calling the guards. We're playing the sirens. It's a whole different thing. And again, one camera, one alarm panel, we're, act, we're reacting differently to a different situation. Loitering. So you can have a camera that's looking at an area where you don't want people to be and detect if someone is loitering. I don't know what this guy is doing behind that bush. I don't want to know what this guy is doing behind that bush. But I do know he ain't supposed to be there. And the camera can actually detect someone's in an area they're not supposed to be or in a time when they're not supposed to be there and activate the loitering event, which, again, can send a report, call the building manager, whatever you need to do to get that person out of there. Now this is, you know, 
an area behind a business, but imagine if it was a door by the school. And again, let's say he's not loitering by the picnic table by the bush, he's loitering by the back door of your kid's school where your kids are in school. We'd like somebody to scare him away, so we're going to activate the keypad in the school principal's office. We're going to send a report to the custodian. We've got to get this guy out of here. So we have another poll. I hope by now everybody knows the answer to this, which is can an intrusion system be used to control a camera? Well, we have 96% have said yes, an intrusion system can be used to control a camera. And again, you people are really, really smart. You are right. Of course, an intrusion panel can be used to control the camera. And here's how that works. Let's say I'm the camera that's looking at this parking lot. And my job during the day is to look for cars that are driving too fast or driving the wrong way or parked in the wrong spot or perhaps someone has fallen walking out to their car. That's my job during the day. But let's say this is a store and the store closes at night. And as a camera at night, my job isn't to look at the parking lot anymore. It's to look for someone who might be approaching the store because they're fixing to break in through the front window. They're going to throw a brick through my window. I want to scare them away. So at night, my job is to, is to catch someone who's approaching the store. During the day, my job is to watch the parking lot. How do I know if it's day or night? Well, I know that it's day or night. As a store, the store knows if it's day or night because the alarm system is armed at night, disarmed during the day. The alarm system can signal the, con the camera when it is armed. So when the alarm system arms, it signals the camera and says, I'm armed, nobody's supposed to be here. The camera knows, OK, then I'm supposed to switch my analytic. So I don't care about people driving in the parking lot anymore. I'm just going to look for people approaching the store. And if I see anybody, I'll let you know. And then the alarm panel will trigger, turn on the floodlights, play a message, thank you for your interest, please come back during business hours, something to scare that person away so they don't throw a brick through your front window. And again, same, we got this loitering guy here outside of our store, outside of our business. There's some picnic tables there. So presumably, sometimes it's OK to be hanging out at the picnic tables. Sometimes it's not. So we can control that by the arm state of the panel. We can control that by a schedule, an output, any, anything that makes sense for that application. But yeah, indeed, the alarm panel can actually be used to control the, the camera, which allows it to make decisions based upon the status of the building. Are you armed? Are you disarmed? Is it day? Is it night? Is it the afternoon? All those things can be used to drive different analytics. Here's another way that we can get value from connecting our cameras to our alarm panels, and that's with tamper detection. What do you think this guy's fixing to do? He's getting ready to spray the lens of your camera with that spray paint. If he sprays the lens of that camera with that spray paint, your camera's not going to be able to see anymore. And if it can't see anymore, he could come back and empty the warehouse or steal a car or steal some construction material, whatever he wants to steal. Wouldn't it be nice to know that that camera has been tampered with? Well, if he sprays the lens of the camera and it can't see video anymore, or if it's a box camera and he's pointed at the ceiling and normally that camera's looking at your dock door and now it sees your ceiling, it's lost its reference image, that can activate a tamper condition which can be reported to the alarm panel. And if it's reported to the alarm panel, you can react to it before a bad guy comes and empties your warehouse. Kind of neat. The other thing we can do with the alarm panel connection to the camera is tell the camera to do things like send video to the central station. We have an alarm. Somebody has pressed the panic button. So please send video associated with that event to the central station, and we can actually do that through Bosch's cloud-based services. 
So in your central station, you might be using our cloud-based services, and that allows the camera to send video associated with the event 10 seconds prior, 10 seconds after that event, and now you can react to it in a more efficient way because you have more information. So I hope that this presentation helped you understand more about the benefits of in integrating your IP cameras to your intrusion system and some of the unique things that a Bosch integration can do for you. It doesn't cost any more because the camera and the panel are both connected to a network anyhow. You're just connecting the two of them intelligently. It allows you to add security. It allows you to create unique so solutions for your customers that allow them to run their business more efficiently. So our first question today is, what is the cost of adding a camera to the intrusion system? What do, what do the analytics cost? Oh, that's a good question. I left that out. It's actually nothing. So our cameras include analytics at every level. Some of our very, very inexpensive cameras just have motion detection. But really, from down low in our product line all the way up through, we have video content analytics at the edge built into the camera. They're already there. There's no additional licensing costs. There's no licensing costs to connect it to the alarm panel. So it it's... No additional cost, it's free. When you connect a camera to an alarm panel, can it still be recording? Yeah, absolutely, and that's an important point here. We, we look at that interaction so closely, you know, the interaction between intrusion and, and the camera and those things talking to one another, but they're still doing their normal job as well. So that camera is continuing to provide video for forensics or recording. The alarm panel is continuing to do its thing, whether it's monitoring intrusion or fire or running your access system. This capability we talked about today is in addition to all of that. So yes, absolutely, you can still be recording when the camera is performing these functions. Is the integration through an API or is it on board the panel? It's on board. So all of those panels that I showed in one of those early slides, that integration is built into the panel. And as long as you're using a Bosch camera and you're using a Bosch panel, they're designed to work with one another. You simply program the IP address of the camera into the panel. Now the panel knows it's supposed to go out and look for it. And you can start to run these events. Is there an online technical training module available for technicians for integrating intrusion and cameras? Yes, there is. There is an online course, our training management system, our learning management system. And if you log in there, you'll have access to all kinds of online training programs. And one of them in the intrusion section is indeed connecting your IP camera to your IP alarm panel and how that integration works. What if two analytic events happen at the same time? Well, actually, we could support up to eight analytics at the same time. They will both do their job. They'll all activate the, if you have it connected to a point on the alarm panel over that network, all of that stuff will activate. So the, pan, the camera can actually support eight analytic events at once and signal eight different inputs to the alarm panel at once. Can the integration work with other manufacturers' IP cameras? Um, the direct integration between the camera and the panel, no. That's a Bosch exclusive feature. So that feature where we connect our IP cameras to the network, we connect our panel to the network, and they talk to one another, that's built into the code of our cameras and our panels. But if you recall very early in the slides, we had that BVMS software, the Bosch Video Management software. And that actually allows you to connect a third-party camera to the Bit Video Management software and activate events on the control panel. So the long answer, of course, is yes, a third-party camera can be used, but it uses our software in that regard 
if you're using a Bosch camera, it doesn't require any special software. It's a direct integration. Okay. Do we have any camera limitations for integrating with the intrusion panel? The only limitations really are the number of cameras. So with our largest panel, our B9512 panel, we support up to 16 cameras. It goes down from there, down to our 4512 panel, which supports two. So it's, it's some number in between. But the limitation would be the quantity, that would be the only limitation. And if you needed to go beyond that, then you would add one of our NVRs or you would add the BVMS software and that will get you way beyond that 16 number. Okay, we have time for one last question and that is, if I'm not a dealer, how can I buy a Bosch panel? Well, that's a good question. We actually have a number of our control panels that are available through distribution. So we have several distrib distributors now that handle our B-series panel. And our B-series panels, the B6512 actually goes up to 96 points and supports some doors of access. So it's a really nice commercial panel and does support this as well. And if that's not big, big enough, or you need additional capacity, you can contact your Bosch sales representative and talk about becoming a dealer. But you don't need to be a dealer today. So if you're one of our customers who uses our cameras, but you're not using our intrusion panels at this point, you can go down to your favorite distributor and pick up a, an alarm panel and try it out. And then if you decide that, hey, this is really cool and I want bigger systems, then we can talk about making you an, an intrusion dealer.